Today we're going to be practicing a skill of finding common denominators. This has many uses, including when you're adding or subtracting fractions, but also as we're about to practice modeling fraction division, we need common denominators then as well. If we look at these two fractions, we have 5 twelfths and 8 36. And all I'm going to do right now is find a common denominator for those two. Remember, denominator is the number on the bottom. And we want to have each of these fractions to now have the same denominator. You're going to want to use your use of multiplication facts. And if you're not so sure of those, please make sure you have a multiplication table open. So if we're looking at 12 and 36, we want to think what number can we multiply them by so they are in common. I know if I did 12 times 3, that would equal 36. So I only need to multiply the denominator of the first fraction here, 12 times 3. And therefore, I would also multiply the numerator because we need to keep it balanced. And in doing so, 5 times 3 would be 15, and 12 times 3 would be 36. And so now these fractions have a common denominator, meaning it is the same. For some problems, you might need to multiply both fractions to get that common denominator. Again, you want to be thinking about those multiplication facts. Um, what can you multiply that will multiply 5 and 4 to get that will be the same. Um, sometimes it is just easier to take the two numbers and multiply them by itself. That's going to give me my lowest common denominator. So I can do here 5 times 4 and therefore also doing 3 times 4 so that I now have 12 twentieths and so then I would be multiplying my second fraction by 5, with the goal here being that now they each end up with a denominator of 20. So we have 5 twentieths and 12 twentieths. We can use this same process here, okay, even when we have a mixed number. Um, there's nothing that we need to do differently. When there's a mixed number, you can actually ignore that whole number altogether. And when we look at our two denominators that we have here, we have a 4 and we have a 12. And so we only need to change this first one. Again, I know 4 times 3 would give me 12. So I will also do 3 times 3. I'm going to put my answer here on the bottom. Okay, again, the 7 isn't changing. 4 times 3 gives me that 12 to be in common, and 3 times 3 will be 9. And these two fractions are actually equivalent to each other, but again, they have now the 12 in common.